Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity in the upper right-hand corner. As our black Zerg hero, we have Machine in the bottom left-hand corner. As the gray Protoss legend, we have Dentarg. And this is going to be on Eclipse, part of VSL Season 14, Hasu League Group E. And this entire group has been casted out of order. I think I, so I ended up doing the winners and the losers. I think I said they were like maybe game one, game two, so... Look for that as far as the next two comments that come up, um, unfortunately. But, but, uh, this is game one. I don't have game two, but I do have the final. So I had four replays. I didn't know the actual order and went from there. Machine, I think, is a heavy favorite to go all the way because he's played in Gosu League. He's been a, I think, many at many points in his career, the best Zerg in the United States. Duntarg, though, a very strong player himself. Uh, one of those guys who helps at C helps out at CPL is definitely one of those top tier players. And he's looking for a championship too. Looks like he went ahead and placed the pylon, although moving that probe back usually suggests that he's thinking about more of a forge opener. It looks like Machine is going to open up with the overpool, playing absolutely safe, which I think makes sense from... Machine is one of those guys that... He likes playing long macro games, and he tends to win a lot of his matches in the late game. He is a ferocious player when it comes to macro. However, oftentimes what people say he, uh, at Machine being the name, he can play robotic. He can end up playing kind of the same style, which sometimes does make him vulnerable against certain opponents that are able to capitalize on that. Looks like we are seeing a Forge first opener from Dentark. He's moving the probe along the south, interestingly enough. And actually, it looks like he wants to peek it in the bottom right hand corner. So I do wonder if he's up to. wonder if he was trying to catch an Overlord or something like that. I don't know what's going on here. Um, kind of an interesting scouting pattern from that probe. It will manage to avoid the Overlord scout, but it's not catching. This is a bit early for a third hatchery or anything along those lines. And Machine isn't one of those guys who, who's going to proxy hatch or anything. Anyway, two Zerglings being produced. Hatchery is already in place. And with the kind of. What do we want to say it? The mutagenic stage it sounds weird. When it goes to this stage, you knew it was a twelve, uh, a twelve hatch. When you see it a little bit smaller, you know that it's the nine pool. Some drones being tacked on for machine. It looks like we do have the nexus and a cannon being warped in. I believe that nexus was dropped before the cannon for Dentarg, so he's got a pretty decent economic start. An extractor being dropped as well. Overlord scooting down and a gateway in the way. So both players opening up with something a little bit more economic. So we are going to see at least a movement towards a macro mid-game. Machine has those two Zerglings hunting down this probe, th those probes. It looks like there is a drone at the 12 o'clock base to go ahead and go into three hatch play, which is the standard these days. Either three hatch needlesk if you... And the thing is, is it, a lot comes down to this probe scout. If you can kill the probe scout early, you can easily transition into that three hatch hydra build. And just because it's very difficult to know how many cans you're supposed to dedicate, things like that. See the first sell it being produced by Dentar. He's already got the assimilator. He's going to actually put down his cybernetic. So knowing he's going up against Machine, who again is more of a macro-oriented player, he's going to go ahead and drop that cybernetic score even before this sell it. And part of that is, is because he's doing a great job of keeping this probe alive. It's been cycling. Now granted, there could have been Zerglings that have been produced out of the natural expansion. But... By keeping this probe scout alive, he knows that, hey, I can sneak that before I even get my initial zealot out, although that initial zealot's being produced right this second. Layers being morphed at the natural expansion. I think Dentarg realizes at this stage, though. Well, actually, you might want to get a look, because sometimes Zerg players will drop down a Hybless den. Looks like he is going to be able to sneak down. He's not going to have the exact timing of the layer, but I think based on standard build orders and knowing machine style of play, I think we'll have a pretty good idea of it. Machine not boxing out this 12 o'clock location, so then Targ is going to be able to scout that. Machine going ahead and plopping in an Overlord to see the Stargate being built as well. And I think Machine is going to fold back. Looks like the probe scout finally killed. Is going to fold back to the four hatch style. So he's he's got the lair finished. He'll drop the Spire, and I assume put down a fourth hatchery. And just get those initial two Scourge and try to play the game from there. Plus one weapons being built. By the time the Stargate's finished, it might be able to take this near side Overlord out. But it, again, you have to be very, very careful. That's kind of the power of the that Spire and getting the initial Scourge out. Is you really need to make sure you keep that Corsair alive. Basically to serve the same function as that probe in the early game. 
to kind of keep your opponent honest and to know what kind of corners you can cut to to get that mid-game lead. But when you end, and it looks like plus one. Ooh, nice. Okay, so Dentart going for plus one weapons. So it looks like what he's opting to do is go for early game air control. And I feel like this is cutting edge play right now. Is Zerg going for this fourth hatchery? Once they get the spire up, going for the initial scourge. And Protoss going for a mid-game Corsair count of about five or six to go ahead. A little bit of a skirmish out on the front. The Zealots marching forward killing a few zerglings the corsair yeah on the way wants to go ahead and take a look at how, uh, basically the drone saturation but you can see with all of this creep calling also defensively being put on the front door so initial buildings of a sim city for both players or for uh for machine i should say so the corsair gonna go up it wants to go ahead and look at the drone saturation see that there's a sentinel colony that's a big tell that machine's gonna be more macro oriented here but there are mutalisks being produced here from machine so it looks like he is opting for mute play and there are the two Scourge, so that means Dentarg is going to need to plop cannons back in his defense along that natural expansion. He's already got a cannon protecting that Stargate. That plus one weapons will be of some help, but it's going to be a while before it comes online. And this is, this is the absolute cutting edge, I think, right now. Is as Protoss have tried to get more Corsair to control the mid-game, Zerg players have been opting to instead, yeah, get the Scourge and insufficient numbers move out the mutalisks and see what they can do is there a cannon down yet this is dangerous because this natural expansion is very exposed to these mutalisks now looks like several mutalisks are making their way this direction the scourge checking out the main not finding anything they're gonna go ahead and back out but you can see some mutalisks waiting in the wings scourge coming here they're gonna be able to box out that corsair so dentarg without sufficient defense and so gonna end up losing some probes now dropping a cannon the corsair pushing up machine happy to engage plus one weapons not there yet so a lot of probes getting taken out now trying to move in the cannon's been wiped out and now the probes retreating off that natural expansion this is going to be a big economic hit to start the corsair count has grown the Zealots marching across the field while those Mutalisks are out of position. Machine drawing those Mutalisks back. He's going to go ahead and send them. Potentially, he'll be able to engage them at the 12 o'clock location. There's a something colony there, but not a lot of not a lot of ground troops to help defend this. So Mutalisks, yeah, repositioning. The Scourge going to come alongside just in case the Corsair wanted to get involved. No drone kills yet. There's one drone kill down. So looking for the counterattack, but these Zealots are actually rapidly getting cleaned up. So two drone kills for five zealots and the corsair fleet is moving forward but there's still plenty of scourge to go ahead and engage this and actually did the scourge move forward i think that i might have missed some scourge hits and so this is so machine has air control he's got dentark pinned into two bases basically he he's in a strong economic position he's hit that 40 count he's starting to transition to hydralisks might be in a contained situation and dentark just now dropping Three additional gateways to get his gateway count to four so there's two cannons in the main he does have templar tech along the way this is also however going to delay a robotics facility potentially he has the five corsair but he really hasn't managed to get any overlord kills or he needs to have those corsair basically to survive against the mutalisks and machine is expanding so machine in firm control of this match just about even in supply as the corsair or as the corsairs are as the hydralisks are being produced range is now being upgraded but with this plus one weapons, he's basically potentially going to be able to just march to Dentarg's front door and seal him in. There will be plus two weapons on the way, and we haven't gotten an evolution chamber upgrade yet for Machine. So there is going to be that slight lead for Dentarg overall, but maybe if he can just pump enough units and micro it perfectly, nail a Psy Storm or two, he'll be in good position. It looks like he is dropping that second forge to try to roll that upgrade advantage to get back into this in the late game but right now machine macroing up like he does and this is kind of the scary part of machines play if he has enough economy to roll he's really good with mid-game troop movement and just being absolutely everywhere on the map zergling going ahead and checking that third base dentarg moving out with his troops he's even got a dark templar with that army two archons in front marching into this attack force and Machine there to engage it. The Corsair is getting a lot of hits on these Mutalisks. The Mutalisks trying to pull back. Don't like what they see. 
You have the entire army folding back. They actually might even be waiting for Weapons 1 before they re-engage. And Machine, yeah, now that Weapons 1 is coming online, turning around, looking for opportunities, and Dentar didn't actually completely turning around. The Corsairs being sent to the bottom right. They're maybe, yeah, it looks like they're going to be able to find an Overlord. The Hydralisks repositioning to potentially get there. But Dentark doing a good job of keeping Machine in the dark. Looks like he's got him in the red as well. But Machine marching forward, potentially get a seal with those Corsairs not to support. This Mutalist Hydralisk army is going to be overwhelming. There is an Overlord in position here to help deal with that Dark Templar. And now, as the Corsairs move in, there's enough uninhibited Mutalisks and Hydralisks that they're going to be able to engage that fleet. So Dentark getting boxed back into his natural expansion. Plus one weapon Hydralisk there. A decent side storm to catch a lot of those Mutalisks to really soften them up. But there's still a lot of Hydralisks here on the front and Lurker Tech is being morphed. So Dentarg has a thinning window to go ahead and he does have his robotics facility up, but he needs to have just the raw unit count in Dragoons in uh, Psy Storm and everything else to go ahead and punch out and grab his third. But as things stand, he's going up four base versus two and Machine is ahead in the overall worker count and starting to... I, have, I don't see a second evolution chamber. There's the second evolution chamber, but starting to push things ahead in a very, very strong position right here. You can see he just keeps migrating these Hydralisks back and forth, but that troop count is growing. Dentar with the supply lead at the moment, running into some Hydralisks. The Corsair fleet just going to slip ahead and see what they can get. And Machine is going to sacrifice a handful of Hydralisks to get the rest of the Hydralisks back. I think he wants to get into the protective shell of the SimCity before he engages this. The Mutalisks swinging around, able to pick up a High Templar, which is huge. And without the Psy Storm there to support... Machine immediately turns around and engages this army. So there was the plus two weapon spike, but Dentarg not able to keep that army cohesive. There's and now lurkers are morphing midfield, and this very rapidly could turn into a contain and a box out from a third from Dentarg. The Corsair is floating overhead. Zealot's getting wiped out, and that army's gone. And it, a decent size storm, but doesn't catch a lot. Dentarg going to call GG right there. Machine has an overwhelming attack force, an overwhelming economy. Dentarg unable to take his third. Machine takes game one, and as we already knew, if you're part of the Twitch stream, moves to the winner's bracket. Dentarg plays the losers, both of which have already been commentated, so whatever I say there, it's incorrect. They are correct as labeled on YouTube. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.